Hey there everyone, my name is Waffles the Asian Yenber and I play One Piece in Japan. OPO6 has recently hit the West and if you found my channel for my OPO5 guides, you might be wondering, what do I do now? Well, this video is going to be kind of a catch-all update to let you know how each of these five decks should be adjusted going into the new set. Now, I'm going to expect that you already watched the O5 video, so I'm going to skip over explanations for how to play the deck and just kind of focus in on the new stuff. Uh, if you didn't watch the video, I do have it down in the description, the links and all that good stuff, but I'm also going to leave some time codes down there so you can just skip to whatever deck you're looking to update. But with all that being said, let's jump into it. So first, let's start with Purple Luffy. If you've already done some research, you know that Purple Luffy, he's not that strong in the 06 meta. That's mainly due to a couple big factors. First off, Yamato. If you don't know, he's got double attack and that puts you in a real bad spot if you're using mono purple Luffy. If you try to ramp with your Luffy's effect, he's just going to attach a bunch of Dawn and swing at your face. So, you really have two main options to deal with this. Low cost blockers and more 2k counters. So, we're going to adjust the curve a bit to cater to this matchup. Uh, you're going to want to go second and you're going to try to mulligan to make sure you have two 2k counters in hand for turn 3 or that you get two Kashiki in hand. Uh, he's new in the set and will still let you cycle in the late game, so he does fit pretty well in this deck. Turn 3, they might attach 3 Dawn and just swing. You either block with Shiki or you counter. Turn 4, you can do the ulti and page 1 combo, but you might leave yourself open to getting hit. Uh, you can drop a wire, which we're up into 4 copies instead of 3, and he's also going to be a big deal in the Raiju matchup, but we'll get into that in a little bit later. Uh, turn 5, that's going to heavily depend on which variant the Yamato is, but he might go for a 6k leader swing which you should counter out of, and then drop a Kikunojo or other Wano character. Uh, if it's the Fortress Yamato, then they might just go for a 10k leader swing at your face, or slightly less if they want to play a Searcher. If we can't block that, it kind of sucks, but you just hope that they didn't also play Onami and they got banished. It's not great. Uh, like I said, matchup, not very good. But from here, you're basically just going to try to keep yourself alive long enough to get out Kaido and 7C Kid, and then you're going to try to just take the momentum from there. If you're facing Fortress Yamato and you survive long enough to get Kaido out, you should be in a pretty decent spot. So all in all, we've added 5 cards, 4 Shiki and 1 Wire. So we're removing the 2 Babanuki and 3 of our John Barts. John Bart is great, but he is kind of useless in this matchup. For the Raiju matchup, like I said, Wire is pretty big. They're going to be Dawn minusing almost every turn, and so you're going to be getting a free draw and then removing anything bad from your hand. You want to rush to get that 7c kit out because the extra attack boost makes the Raiju player have to use more Dawn to get over you, and it makes you able to use one 2k counter to get out of your Ichiji attacks. Wire is a 3 cost, which means they can't KO it with Niji, and they'll have to send it back to your hand. Versus Perona, you're gonna have to be a little bit more aggressive. You don't need to play the low cost blockers, she's just gonna rest and KO them. Instead, just swing at face, ramp, and keep the pressure up. With Moria, you're actually going to do the same thing, but watch your hand size. Turn 3 Perona is a really common play, and you can just get out of it by having 4 or less cards in your hand. You don't need to care about Red and Purple Uda or Hody because they suck, but Sakazuki and Anel are more of a problem than they were before. Now, even with these changes, Mono Purple Luffy is just not that strong in this meta. There is a reason he only got 2 tops on One Piece top decks, but... If you really want to keep playing him, these changes should help make him at least a little bit viable. When it comes to Enel, you're looking at a real solid deck for this meta. He gets a few buffs, and while he's not quite at the level he will be after the extra booster set, we can really make use of the new cards. In the original video, I advocated for a Sky Island focus build, but with the addition of the yellow Wano cards, I think it's best to swap over to that core. However, no matter which one you choose to go with, at the bare minimum, here are the main changes you need to make. First, we're dropping all 4 copies of Brulee and 4 copies of Elsor. Instead, we're adding 4 copies if you're the one who should disappear. That's a 0 cost event that lets you trash a card for 3000 counter, and if it's the last card in your life, the trigger also just gives you an L's effect again, which and that's going to stack, so you get to add 2 cards from the top of your deck to your life. We also want 2 more copies of 200 million volt Amaru, since it is a fantastic way to deal with blockers in the late game. That means you're going to have an easier time versus Sakazuki and Perona. We also want two copies of Reject, unless it gets banned early. Uh, Reject is another win condition, and some NL players run it at four. If you choose to do that, then just drop Amaru to two copies. 
If you want to keep the Sky Island core, then you can stop here. However, I'm recommending that you dump all that. So minus 4 Ohm, minus 4 Gadatsu, minus 4 Holly, minus 4 Satori, and minus 4 Shura. Instead, we're also... Oh, yes, also we're going to drop one blocker Sanji to make a little bit more room there. We're going to keep the 2 and L's for now, but we'll, we'll replace them when Sutter Deck 13 comes out. In its place, we're going to be adding 4 Shira Hoshi, 3 Onami for the Banish, uh, 4 Kikunojo, 4 Hiyori, 4 Momonosuke, and 2 more Linwits. When Sutter Deck 13 comes out, switch your 2 and L's for 2 5-cost Ace. He also has Rush and 7k Attack, but he costs 2 less. The only condition is you have to be at 2 or less life to get the Rush, but you're an L, you're always at 2 or less life. So, the reason we want to do this all together is Hiyori. She's going to give you more control over what's in your life, and she's a solid 2k counter. But you can then drop Momonosuke down and use his effect to add any Wano card, so that's Hiyori, Kikunojo, or 9c Yamato if you're in a real tough spot, uh, and put that back into your life. It is a cheap way to get back to 2 life, and it's going to give you also a good blocker. Kikunojo can be played on the trigger without us having to drop any cards from her hand, which we really like that, and she's going to give us an extra life when she gets KO'd as long as your opponent is at 3 or less life, which they should be. 4 Linlin -lin is pretty necessary, and since we have the you're the one who should disappear, the lack of counters is probably going to be fine. Shirahoshi also just really should have been in the deck before. Uh, the cycling is a big help for her now, and I kind of made a mistake in that video not having Shirahoshi, so I really think 4 copies Shirahoshi, definitely the way to go. Now when it comes to the matchups, you can pretty much just do what you were normally doing in 05. Uh, Reiju is a little bit of an issue since she can rush you down, but that's why Momonosuke is a big help. He kind of gives you that extra turn you need just to catch up. Yamato is kind of annoying, but if you're up against the Fortress build, you've got plenty of time to get your big guys out, and Amaru can just rest the blockers. Corona is slow, so just focus on getting her to 3 life, so when she uses her resources to KO the Kikunojo, you still get the benefit. Amaru is also pretty big in this matchup to deal with Borsalino. And like I said with Luffy, we just don't care about Uda or Hodi. Honestly, I kind of debated just making a full new guide for Sakazuki because this set changes his endgame a lot and gives him so many more combos. However, I kind of decided it would be better to wait until the ban list is actually announced for the West. That way we can just get that all at once, but for now I'm going to give you the simple version. First, you need for Toshiki. She is a blue rare in the set that searches marines or navy, whatever the English translation is. Uh, her and brand new means that you have pretty good control over what you're drawing. To make space, we're going to be dropping two marine fort and two of our 7c Borsalinos. You also want four copies of 8c Gekko Moria. He is incredibly good in this deck, so we're going to drop one Hina, the last 7c Borsalino, and two Sabos. We're also swapping out one of our three 3000 worlds for an extra Hound Blaze. I still stand by the tech of having 3000 worlds in the deck, but we want to max out on Hound Blaze. Uh, you might see a lot of people swapping out the stutter deck to Shigis for the 2k counter Virgo, but you don't really need to do that. That's more of a thing for Perona players because he's searchable with Baby 5 and Brand New, but for you it's just searchable with uh, Brand New and, well, Tashigi as well. Uh, if you already have the starter deck Tashigis, you're fine to keep those, uh, but that being said, you are going to drop one copy of her and one copy of your Rob Luchis, and so we can add in two 4C Kuzans. Your deck is pretty consistent, so you're going to be fine having Luchi at 3, uh, but we do really need those Kuzans for some of these matchups. So let's get into that now. You're pretty much going to expect to see Mirror Matches, Gekko Moria, and Yellow decks with the occasional other deck in this meta. We're keeping Ice Age at 3, which is a little bit more than the average, but that's because it's really big in the Yellow matchup, and that's also why we're adding in Kuzan. I'm not a huge fan of him, since he is a little bit slow, but with how prevalent Yellow is, you need ways to deal with the big characters, and just having the Ice Ages won't be enough. The extra Hound Blaze helps us deal with Moria, since a lot of his characters are around for Dawn. And the main thing you need to start considering is how you're going to use the 8C Moria effectively. You're already familiar with the Rebecca into Hina combo, and you can use Moria as an upgraded version of that if you want, but you have more options than that. So if you didn't know, 8C Moria brings back a 4 cost or lower character from your trash active, and a 2 cost or lower character rested. Now this and any other on-play effects happen at the same time, so you get to choose the order. You can also use Moria to grab Borsalino if you need an extra blocker out, or you can go Moria, Sudo for the minus 2 cost, and then Luchi to get his KO effect. You can even use him to bring back a Kuzan if you feel like you can keep him around long enough, but as far as matchups go, 
Perona can't really do that much against you if you just bottom deck her Borsalinos and Sabos. If you're up against Fortress Yamato, save your Ice Agents for the 8C Kid, otherwise you should be fine there. Katakuri and Anel are going to be the same as before, but keep in mind the Amaru play. You don't want to drop them to one life if you only have one blocker out, because then they're just going to hit you with the Amaru and just rush you down. Reiju can be a little bit of an issue if she draws a perfect hand, since she can rush out a board a lot faster than you can deal with, but if you just focus on surviving and bottom decking the Ichijis, you're going to take the game just fine. Moria is also a little bit of an issue since he is faster, so try to bottom deck as much as you can, and this is actually why I like the extra 3000 worlds. If you know that he can't deal with Borsalino since he can only KO, you can use your Borsalino as the blocker, protect him pretty well, and bottom deck any of his important cards. When it comes to Red Purple Luffy, I'm actually a huge fan of just playing the deck as is from 05. Luffy doesn't get many new options, and the deck is pretty solid. The main issue he runs into in 06 is just that Katakuri is really popular, and if you get hit by Yamato, you're in a real bad position. If you find that you're facing a lot of Katakuris and not as many Sakazukis at your local game store, Shiraya is a nice tech. And I'd probably drop your four Zora Juros in that case, but I wouldn't really recommend adding the Shiraya in otherwise. Uh, Reiju can be a little bit annoying with the EGGs, but once you get a big hitter out, you should be fine there. And Perona won't really be an issue with the deck. Uh, Moria has a tough time against you. Sakazuki is the same as before, and Yamato is a real big problem for the deck. Fortress Yamato can be dealt with. You can get out your uh, 10C Luffy, and then you'll be fine there. But a more aggressive variant can cause us a lot of issues, especially if they run Onami. For Uda, these changes are just going to give her a better shot versus the 06 metagame. We're dropping two copies of Where the Wind Blows, our two copies of Law, our one copy of Frankie, and two copies of 8C Vanilla Luffy. Instead, we want four copies of 8C Captain Kid and two copies of Hody Jones. Captain Kid complements the deck pretty well since we have a decent amount of blockers, and Hody Jones gives you yet another finisher and another way to deal with blockers outside of backlight. I don't really like adding more non-film cards to the deck, but we kind of need to do that to stay competitive. Another option you could do if you don't want to do Hody Jones is you could go for two 9C Rororona Zoros. Uh, that's probably going to be a bit more expensive, but if you drop that on the field, you put a, an immense amount of pressure on your opponent. All that being said though, Uda will get a lot better in Extra Booster 01, but you might notice that other green decks, kind of like Yamato and Perona, are going to have the upper hand in this meta for a bit. <laughs> Never fear, Uda is still a strong competitor, and she even won the Nationals in Japan, so, you know, don't sell your cards yet. But you do kind of have to stick through the tough bits. And when it comes to matchups, it's pretty much the same as before. You don't need to play differently, but you do need to study up on what the other new decks do. That way you know what to expect. And if you know what to expect, then you can play around them, but you're still just trying to get into a position where you can surprise them with some I'm Invincibles or now Hody Jones. And that's it. I'm not 100% sure when this video is going up, but as of right now, I do have two main guides that are already written up and they just need to be turned into videos. If you've already seen my OP06 meta spreadsheet, any of the leaders that say queued are ones I want to put out guides for during the set. If it says in progress, I've already written them or I'm editing or something like that. Uh, probably I'll record Nami's guide first just because she's my favorite deck. Uh, then Reiju after because I main turn 06. For all the other ones, I do have the deck lists ready, and I've at least started writing the guides, but I'm hoping I can get at least one guide out every two weeks or so. In the meantime, I hope you're excited for the set. I did not enjoy it, but that's mainly just because there wasn't a lot of variety, and I like facing a lot of different kinds of decks, and I didn't want to spend all that money to play yellow. <laughs> but still, ever since Extra Booster came out, it's actually been pretty great. Anyway. My name is Waffles the Asian Yenber, and I'm gonna be king of the pirates. See ya!